All right, guys. Um, I just wanted to touch base with you guys. I know I didn't talk to you this entire time, but um, I wanted to kind of um, hopefully do a daily um, uh, Holy Week segment with you guys that you guys can watch and just... I'm not going to go long. I am going to read to you. I'm sorry for that. Um, this is from a Bible that I love. It's uh, a daily Bible that basically puts all of the um, stuff uh, from each gospel kind of congruently in a um, um, in an order that makes sense. So you don't have to read necessarily just one God or all four gospels. This puts them all in cons consensual order um, based off of timeline. Um, so. Uh, I want to read to you guys the triumphant entry. So it says that a uh, crowd goes out to meet Jesus. The next day, the great crowd that had come to the feast heard that Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem. They took palm branches and went out to meet him, shouting, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the King of Israel. Jesus sends for Colt. As he approached uh, Bethphage and Bethany at the hill called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go to the village around, ahead of you, and as you enter it, you will find a colt tied there, uh, which no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you why you're untying it, tell them the Lord needs it. This took place to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet. Um, the prophet they're talking about is uh, uh, Zechariah. So it says, Say to the daughter of Zion, See, your king comes to you, gentle and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the fowl of a donkey. At first, his disciples did not understand all of this. Only after Jesus was glorified did they rec or realize that these things had been written about him and that they had done these things to him. They went and found a colt outside the street, tied to a doorway. As they untied it, some people standing there asked, What are you doing untying that colt? They answered as Jesus had told them to, and the people let them go. When they brought the colt to Jesus, they threw their cloaks over it, and he sat on it. When he came near the place that the road, or where the road goes down the Mount of Olives, uh, the whole crowd of disciples began joyful, joyfully uh, to praise God in loud voices for all the miracles they had seen. Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to, Je said to Jesus, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. I tell you, he replied, if they keep quiet, the stones will cry out. <sighs> Love that. Uh, many people spread their cloaks on the road while, they, uh, while others spread branches they had cut in the fields. As he approached Jerusalem and saw the city, he, he wept over it and said, If you, even you, had only known on this day what would, or what would bring you peace, but now it is hidden from your eyes. The day will come upon you when your enemies will build an embankment against you and encircle you and hem you on every side. They will dash you to the ground, you and the children within your walls. They will not leave one stone or on another because you did not recognize the time of God's coming to you. When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred and asked, Who is this? The crowds answered, This is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. Now the crowd that was with him when he, when he called Lazarus from the tomb and raised him from the dead, continued to spread the word. Many people, became, because they had heard uh, that he had given this miraculous sign, went out to meet him. So the Pharisees said to one another, See, this is getting us nowhere. Look at the, at the whole world. Look how the whole world has gone after him. Jesus entered Jerusalem and went to the temple. He looked around at everything, but since it was already late... He went out to Bethany and are with the twelve. Look, uh, this, that, that was the end of it, but it says, look how the whole world has gone after him. Let's pray real quick. Lord God, thank you so much for this time. Thank you, Lord, for the ability that we have to still communicate, to still be with one another, um, even though we're not. Lord, I pray exactly what the Pharisee said there. Lord, may the whole world come after you. May we stumble May we crawl, may we run to you, Lord, to understand you better, to know you more. Uh, may, Lord, this beginning of the Holy Week, may we just sit in awe as you hopefully 
triumphantly enter into our lives. Not only Jerusalem, but Lord, into our, our very souls. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I'm not going to talk long, guys. I just wanted to kind of cover a couple things. Um, I want you guys to understand that, that Jesus did this um, secondarily to, the, uh, to fulfill Zechariah's prophecy. Zechariah 9.9 9 talks about this. In fact, it was quoted in this verse. Um, so I'm not going to reread it to you. But that was part of why um, he had to come and he had to sit on a donkey and he had to walk on, on palm leaves. Um, it, was, it was to fill prophecy. But more importantly to that, it was to announce his kingship. Um, it was to say to the world, the world, uh, Jerusalem in particular, that wanted this king, that wanted to be out of Roman oppression. He came to say to that world um, that he was the rightful king. And they, they completely agreed with that. Um, they sang to him. They said, Hosanna, which means Savior. Uh, Savior, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the king of Israel. They were announcing the king. And this, of course, got the, uh, the attention of the Pharisees and even the Roman government to that, that degree. They were saying that this is our true king. Um, and he was. He has the true kingship, not only over that holy city of Jerusalem and all of Israel, but more than that, uh, he has the kingship over the world. Um, it's not that at the time the Romans were the world leaders, if you will. They controlled most of the wealth in the world and most of the world itself. But no, um, he was saying in this moment, walking into Jerusalem at the end of his at the end of his life, for the most part, that the Roman rule had no no bearing to him. That he was the true king. And of course, they sang about that. As they go, there's another thing, thing that they sang. He said, Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. They laid down palm branches. I always found this to be interesting. I mean, it's, it's the namesake of that Sunday. It's Palm Sunday. Um, this was apparently really ancient uh, and something that I relearn every year because you kind of forget these things and you, you hear about it again. But this was a really ancient practice uh, for nobility. People would go into the fields and they would cut down palm branches and they would lay them at the feet. And it even says in the scripture here that they would take off their cloaks and they would lay those down. These were precious to people. People didn't have lots of cloaks laying around. Um, they'd lay them down because the, the nobility were considered too good to walk on the common streets that those people walked on. So they were, again, announcing that this is our king. This is, this is, who we, this is not only who we worship, but this is who we um, bow to. They were submitting themselves as subjects to Christ. Um, those palm branches, they, they're, they're symbols uh, in, during this time. They're a symbol of goodness, wellness, victory. Uh, they can actually be found on Roman currency. You can find it on the drachma, um, which was a, a Roman coin. Um, they were even carved, this is crazy, in Jerusalem. They're carved into the temple. So the temple that Solomon built, uh, he had them carved into the, uh, the walls of the temple. It's, it was just such a prominent uh, example. To us, it's kind of weird. We, we look at it like, why are they doing that? Um, but at the time, it made perfect sense. It showed just how dramatic and how important this was. Um, what's interesting to me, though, is that despite all this, this should have been, like, Jesus should have been smiling ear to ear at, like, the, the love of his people. But he wasn't smiling. Um, he was crying. He actually was crying through that walk. And he was crying because he knew that they weren't going to see him as king a week from today. That, that on Friday, they weren't going to look at him and look at him as, as the king that he was. That instead they were going to spit on him and throw stones at him and say crucify him. Um, they were going to treat him like a common criminal. Like the two people that, that, that hung next to him. So he knew about the destruction. He specifically talks about the destruction of Jerusalem and the sacking of the city um, and, the, and the, literally the tearing down of the temple. And that's what he was crying about. But I think he was crying about more than that. I think he was crying about the end of that week and how these people that were praising him, that were worshiping him, worshiping him as king, were going to turn their backs on him. Um, oftentimes I think of this, this is my own interpretation, it's no one else's, but I think of this as almost as funeral procession. Um, with any funeral, there's people that, that will follow the casket, that will um, stand and give honor to the person who died. This was Jesus' funeral procession before it even happened, before his death. People were standing and giving him honor before they knew that just a few days from now, he was going to give up his life for them. Guys, I hope that, um, that you begin this holy week and you just 
let God pour into you, that you uh, read through the scriptures. I'm going to read through every day. I'm going to try to post. I'm going to read through something every day uh, and kind of talk about it a little bit. I just, I just pray, Lord. Uh, I, I pray a blessing on you guys as you, uh, as you read through this with me, if you do. And uh, I hope that you get as much out of it as I do every year. Um, and, and may we rejoice today because our Lord has come back to Jerusalem. And the beginning of this wonderful week uh, has started. See you guys next time. Bye.